a man arrives at the gates of heaven. St. Peter asks, religion? The man says, Catholic. And St. Peter looks down his list and says, go to room 24, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. Another man arrives at the gates of heaven. Religion? Orthodox. Go to room 18, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. A third man arrives at the gates. Religion? Baptist. Go to room 11, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. The man says, I can understand there being different rooms for different denominations. But why must I be quiet when I pass room 8? St. Peter tells him. Well, the evangelicals are in room 8. And they think they're the only ones here. This is an old joke, and you can substitute the names of any denomination in place of those mentioned. The joke brings up a point though. Who does go to heaven? In John chapter 14 of the New Living Translation Jesus says, There is more than enough room in my Father's home. The two most distinct forms of salvation are Catholic and born again. The term Catholic salvation refers to the salvation that comes to all men and women through Jesus Christ. And entrance into heaven will be judged on your actions while here on earth. Born again salvation, on the other hand, refers to a person's experience of being saved in the acceptance of Christ as your own personal savior. This alone gets you into heaven. The two concepts are not mutually exclusive, but they are distinct. The Catholic Church teaches that Catholic salvation is the salvation that comes from being born again into the body of Christ. It is the process of being saved by God and receiving the Holy Spirit, which makes you a new person with a new life in Christ. Born again salvation is when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You make a conscious decision to follow Him and believe in Him. You become a Christian or a child of God. In this form of salvation, born-again Christians believe that the moment you are saved by Christ with your acceptance of He being your personal Savior, that you are literally and completely changed into God's image. In other words, once you're saved, there's nothing left of your old self and now you're now completely new. And this means that God will never punish anyone who dies as a born-again Christian because their woes of faith are enough. Catholic salvation and born-again salvation are similar in that they both describe the way you are saved from sin and how one enters heaven. The difference is what you need to do in order to meet the requirements of entry. Catholics believe that once you die, you'll go to heaven or hell, depending on how well you've lived your life. But there's no way for you to tell which one you'll end up in ahead of time. For God will be the final judge. This is because God will judge each soul upon his or her merits while living on earth. Faith is critical, but so is how one lives his life and repents for his sin. In contrast, in born-again theology, salvation is considered to be the ultimate goal of human existence. This theological concept is rooted in the belief that all humans are born with a sinful nature and, therefore, require spiritual rebirth to attain eternal life. According to this doctrine, being born again involves a profound transformation of one's heart and mind through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In essence, it means surrendering one's life to God and accepting Jesus as our personal Savior who died for our sins on the cross. It is believed that this experience is necessary for salvation and eternal life. The idea of being born again comes from Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 3, where he says, Truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. This means that a person must have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ and be transformed by his saving grace to enter into God's kingdom. Being born again involves repentance from sin, faith in Jesus Christ, and receiving the Holy Spirit into one's life. In many ways, this is also part of Catholic theology as well. Let me clarify that the role of faith in salvation is a central aspect of the inborn again theology and holds similar importance in Catholicism as well. According to born again doctrine, salvation is not earned through good works or personal merit, but rather it is a gift from God that is received through faith alone. This means that anyone who believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can be saved and have eternal life. Born-again Christians believe that good works are a sign of faith and may help to spread the gospel, but by simply being born again, by their definition, you have a ticket into heaven. 
To sum it up, both born-again Christians and Catholics believe that salvation is found through faith in Jesus Christ. For that there can be no question. The main difference between them is the role and definition of good works in achieving salvation. Both denominations have a strong emphasis on one's personal relationship with Jesus. But Catholics also believe in the power of the sacraments to provide grace based on centuries of tradition. And Catholics stand by that how one has lived his life on earth will have bearing at the time of judgment. Let's take a moment to remember that the concept of Catholic salvation has been around for 2000 years. But the concept of born-again salvation only came about in the early 1900s. This may, or may not, mean anything on the topic of salvation, but important to understand and put into context. As we have alluded earlier, born-again Christians and Catholics have differing beliefs and practices when it comes to Christianity. While both believe in the same God, they have different interpretations of the Bible, and different spiritual practices and traditions. And this includes the subject of salvation. Born-again Christians believe in being saved by faith alone, whereas Catholics believe in being saved by grace, which includes faith and actions. Born-again Christians rely heavily on biblical interpretation, which can differ in some regards from pastor to pastor, by the one interpreting, and the translation used, whereas Catholics rely on the 2,000-year-old teachings of the Church, and its biblical interpretation, the reasons behind the born-again dismissal of Catholic theology and salvation can be summed up by their, similar, but at times different, even polar opposite, interpretations of the Bible. They also disagree on the role of the universal church, particularly the Roman Catholic Church, throughout the centuries and into modern times. And then there is the disagreement about the role of individual faith alone and individual works in salvation. When the arguments are exhausted, and the disagreements have been debated to death. The light shines on how born-again Christians and Catholics are rooted in different interpretations of the Bible, and the different theologies and beliefs about the role of the Church as a whole. This is what separates the two. What each needs to remember, and each seems to forget, is that true Christians, no matter the denomination, follow the teachings of the Christ, and just like the Apostles all heard the same message, and what they each took from it was a little different, as is human nature. Each denomination is likened to a different apostle, and each has a different slant on the interpretation of the teachings. Here's a question. Was only one of the apostles correct in his understanding of the teachings? And if so which one? Or is it just a matter of perspective and depth of what was taken from the teachings? Think about that. Instead of arguing who is right and for what reason, why not look at the similarities each hold on the Christian faith, and be brothers instead of enemies? Unfortunately, these differences have led to a dismissal of each other's faith and beliefs. And, if we are being truthful, isn't this what Satan wants? Uncertainty and discrimination among the ranks? Ego and arrogance are powerful weapons in the hands of the evil one. Regardless, despite the differences between them, both born-again Christians and Catholics strive to live out their faith in their daily lives. And neither should be condemning the other, 